Dear Clémence, we received a few complaints about a smell coming from your flat. We are delighted that you are passionate about fragrance, but if you could in the future avoid to intoxicate all the neighborhood, we would appreciate. Warm regards. Bonjour, bonjour, fragrance lovers, welcome back. In today's video, I'm showing you my favorite category of fragrance, which are mainly orientals and also the one that would leave an intoxicating sillage on you and that would last longer. Why do I do that in spring? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, by the way, the reviews are short for this video as I had to talk to about 20 fragrances. If you don't want to watch the whole video when you're interested in one fragrance of you, you have in the description box all the things you need to know to go directly to this fragrance. Thank you, enjoy. So the first one is Annie Nishen. Nishani? Nishen? How do you say that? That's so difficult. It's an oriental floral and what I really like about this one is you've got a very green opening um, which I really enjoy to have something slightly greener. I think it gives like distinction to a fragrance and then it really dries down to something a much more vanilla like so it's more like a slightly gourmand fragrance vanilla like and then you've got this ginger that makes everything about this fragrance basically the ginger so that that it uplift all the fragrance and it kind of give it like something do you know when you eat ginger and it's slightly burning your tongue or your lips? Well, this is this is what it gives me slightly this vibe, and it feels quite bright. It's not that dark fragrance. Yeah, it's got like something quite powdery with the time as well. But the longevity of this fragrance is amazing, and it's definitely something that when you enter a room, you show that people will see you probably. Now it smell a bit at the dry down like a sweet cake, but. Fortunately, the ginger uplift that up to make it a bit slightly more spicy. It's more like a date kind of fragrance, a bit addictive, comforting. So for me, it's very sexy, but the green notes make it slightly classy too. Next one is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite fragrance ever, and it's Cherzo Myla Harris. You probably heard a lot from me about this one. I've done a 10 minute review video on, on my channel if you want to see more about this, because I need to talk quickly about each fragrance, otherwise this video is gonna last like 30 minutes, and we don't want that. It's a Chypre floral, so basically it's got that slightly touch that is greener again, but much more intoxicating than the one before. We've got sweet notes as well, but it's not overkilling in sweet notes. Basically like a rose type of oud fragrance, which is really nice, but it's not the classic rose oud quite light that you smell. It's so intoxicating, like it's very rich type of hood and I have to say I got the best compliment with this fragrance like I've got many experiences I don't really care about compliment that much but you know when you get it it's like a bonus and I mean every time I'm wearing it every time people ask me where it's from and you've got a lot of patchouli so it gives again the stickiness uh, to the sweet notes so compared to the one it was not like a powdery sweetness it's very like a sticky sweetness which I so loved third one is Bois des Îles from Chanel and I, I needed to take something from Chanel but it was so difficult because there were so many I want to talk about like Sycomore, Coromandel but I wanted to talk about something that I don't see a lot in reviews and it's Bois des Îles. It's an iconic scent because it was launched in 1926 and it's a very exotic type of wood. It's nearly like you sharpening a sandal wood. You smell really that pencil like but then it's warmed up by a tonkebin. A tonkebin slightly vanilla like but not sweet at all so you remove that sweetness and you get that that very sharp, exotic 
uh, woody vibe. For me, it really smells like a jazzy music of the 20s, even though for me it's still quite modern, and you've got that nutmeg kind of feeling as well when you're smelling it. And it's also very bright, like we used to do before, the Aldea is bright in all the fragrance. That's what it does to me. Uh, my mom, I, I gifted it to my mom, and she said that it's a bit too vintage for her. So what she does is she spray a light floral on top. It's gardenia, I think she spray on top, and it smells divine on her. So I, I'll let you imagine how intoxicating it is, but um, it really leaves a long lasting trail, which is beautiful. And you get much more like a woody trail compared to the other one that are a bit more woody, softer, creamy. This one is you get really that sharpness trail. Next one is again from Chanel. Okay, I need to choose just one, but I couldn't, it was too difficult, so I chose Egoist. It's a timeless classic, born in the 90s, but if I'm talking about intoxicating trails, I could not talk about egoist. It means selfish in French, so you can imagine how selfish you are wearing that. Definitely, you're gonna annoy everyone. But usually, I find this fragrance very attractive. It's a dark, shy, sharp, uh, fragrance it's got a lot of spices as if you love a touch of coriander you might enjoy this one it's very different it's very intriguing the first time I smell it I was like oh what is this It's really different and you get that cinnamon type of vibe as well but all of that spiciness is nicely balanced with a touch of floral notes and it's carnation and carnation smells like a bit like a green flowers so it's quite nice actually to balance it with a, such a strong flower every time I smell it it gives me a bit that crisp vibe I think it's just the cinnamon but uh, it's really a self assured scent like if you don't really care about like what other things or things like that this is just beautiful it's classy as well very classy it can I think it can suit someone with a leather jacket and someone with a black suit. Fifth one is Craclé from the Merchant of Venice. So this is a brand that I discovered actually in Venice. I was really happy but um, I discovered a bit more in uh, Harrods. I so love this one. Like I think the lady, the cell consultant showed me so many fragrances this day when I was trying them but that was the one for me that stands out a lot. It's like an oriental but this one's got a very cypress foresty tone so it's not green green anymore it's not like the leaves it's more mossy like in a forest but you've got that kind of like tone a bit woody and also the main accord in that is the leather the leather is really prominent so it gives you something that is very woody but the stickiness of the leather but it's an easy going fragrance it's quite easy to wear i think but you need to enjoy that mossy feelings and that leather tones but the leather is very smooth and delicate and this on the skin smells so 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 long and what really is uh, follows you is that um, cypress type of feeling with the leather which is so sexy. You've got also a lot, little touch of incense uh, that gives a slightly churchy scent. So a bit churchy but not too much. It's nearly like it's a bit forbidden uh, you know this fragrance which make it so attractive. For me it's, it is very very um, mysterious compared to the other one. It's very like you don't really know what to think. For someone that's got a bit like a deeper darker personalities I think it's nice and if I would compare it I always like I don't know I compare it to a music you know Hans Zimmer his songs are very intense but um, they are quite soft to hear even though they're so charismatic well that's what it smells for me there's one of my favorite fragrances for men and for myself, I have to say. It's Halfetti from Penelegance. If you don't know this English house, I highly recommend you to have a try. It's one of my favorite house and this one, Halfetti, for me is the best of the range. It's a woody floral and what is nice with that is also a hood fragrance. I mean, the hood stays so long on the skin. But what is really nice with that is it's nicely balanced with that jasmine. So all this wood, vanilla, 
cypress, green, saffron, cardamom, all these things are here, but it's calmed down and smoothed by the jasmine, and it makes it so classy and elegant, and it's very versatile. It can be something you can wear all year long for me, even though it's quite sharp and strong. Um, it smells very sophisticated. It's nearly like royalty in a bottle. At the beginning, it smells a bit barbershop, and then the drying down feels a bit more smoother and oriented. Compared to your other hood, this one I think is really refined, like very delicate, but the fragrance itself leaves like really a strong trail. And this is something that lasts forever, usually on my skin. Number seven is Etat Libre d'Orange, and it's rien intense incense so this one is literally the definition of intoxicating and <clears throat> it feels a bit soapy to me like the first time i smell it i smell something like a bit fizzy and soapy but this is brutal this is a brutal lever like literally it had to be in this stem because i really enjoy it but it's definitely the gothic scent um, of this whole top definitely it's very dark it's but there's a touch of haldeis that makes it quite uplifting and you've got a lot of incense but it doesn't feel churchy for this incense it feels more like it's deep dark very dangerous fragrance and quite aggressive actually sometimes with the dry down it smells a bit more smoother but at the beginning i felt it was quite aggressive what you can really smell is that incense leather and haldeis together that gives some Something weirdly uplifting but extremely goth. <laughs> Number eight is Noir des Noirs from Tom Ford. So this is a, I'm usually not keen on rose scent but this is a black rose scent. It's um, really like a full body fragrance which is really nice and it's got a lot of like sexiness but in a mature way. It's quite deep dark, you've got a touch of chocolatey coffee like note that is really interesting. When I tell you that, I think you might probably think, oh, it's quite gourmand, but it doesn't feel really gourmand. It's more a rich earthiness as well. There's that dispatch really that is quite earthy in there, and it's a very thick scent. It's not thin. Like when you smell it, you, you can nearly touch it because it's so thick. I think it's the most erotic macho of this um of the list it's got really when it dries down it's a bit more powdery uh, feeling and that chocolatey and velvety keeps being there to me and i love that rose because it's very something different it's like the, the darkness of the rose mine is samsara from guerlain so i had to add that again because i really love this scent for me it's a classic again but it's a very solar type of oriental and I love those kind of thing because um, it's sensual but very sophisticated um, it's really opulent but in the flowers this one so you've got a lot of flowers and they're really there like you've got jasmine you've got oris ylang ylang ja uh, narcissus that is slightly greener uh, but the ylang ylang is very uh, there and ylang ylang flower give you a very solar note that's why I I, I think I wore samsara last year in the middle of summer and I really enjoyed it. So it's very overwhelming, it's very creamy. If you like the dominance of flower in your scent, you're really going to enjoy that. It feels really like fabulous. It's the glamorous of the list, definitely. It's been reformulated quite a lot, or not for the best, unfortunately, which is quite annoying, but still really nice fragrance. Number 10 is Memo Marfa and this is a house that I really enjoy too but I wanted to talk about Marfa because it's slightly different from all the fragrance I'm talking to you. It's a floral woody musky so you've got a dominance in florals again and it's really that orange blossom that gives that orange bitterness and very solar notes as well that is here. It's an explosion of white flowers that's really what it is but it's a kind of like a ray of sunlight. It's very milky as well. It's nice for spring summer. Um, it doesn't feel that loud when you're wearing but for sure that it leaves a trail that is really impressive and 
because it smells nearly like a nectar and I felt this fragrance is very enchanting and if you love orange blossom scent I'm sure you're gonna enjoy that. Number 12, uh, number 12 is Serge Lutin's Chergy. So this one is an oriental spicy and it's one of my favorite because it smells like a pure elixir. It's really a lot of ingredients blended together and it results to, for me, it always give me that image of you, someone that just smoked a cigarette and sp sprayed something sweet on it. There's a note that is really strange as well it's a note of hay and that hay uh, mixed with the tobacco smells very earthy but the honey is giving like a sweeter gourmand accord to this tobacco which is really interesting so i experienced this scent with different people and it really developed difference on everyone like sometimes it smells a bit more masculine you know barbershop like and sometimes on ladies there's the honey that is really predominant so it's something you really need to try before but if you want something long lasting and that really leaves a great impression this one is beautiful it's really like a really good balance of all the ingredients so i'm sure you would be pleased with that and it's got slightly that boozy tone as well Number 12 is Juliette as a gun Midnighthood. I can't stop moving my camera, I don't know. Um, Midnighthood. So this is a fragrance I had difficulties at the beginning, I would say. But the more I wear it, the more I enjoy it because it's a very um, nicely done hood, I would say. It smells very fizzy to me. It's a very clean, clean type of wood, which is nicely done. It smells nearly bubbly, a bit fizzy when you wear it, and it gives me like a very nostalgic feeling because there's a lot of aldehyde in there, and it always smells like a bit fizzy, and it really makes me think of something um, that I smelled in the 20th century, really. It smells like something quite vintage but it's not it's a modernized vintage i don't know if it makes sense uh, but yeah it's got slightly though that plastic tones which at the beginning was repulsing me but now the more i wear it the more i actually enjoy this type of note which is really strange it's a bit also quite animalic which make it ultra ultra sexy and you can really smell the rose but coming after a few minutes so it's not directly to you you can really smell that oud at the beginning but it's a oud that it's a bit dusty it's really the kind of fragrance that give me the impression of something quite snobbish like you know you're in a bad mood and you're in the type of mood like everyone leave me alone and that's it it feels very very opulent this one so lasting forever the 13 is something that i've never seen in top but i really enjoy it is a lush rentless so it's a scent i have since a few uh months now and i really love it it's like power in the bottle uh it's very different from what you smelled before i think it's for the patchouli lovers so if you like a very vintage um sticky patchouli you're gonna enjoy this so it's got that green earthiness of the patchouli but it also got that stickiness of what we used to see before in patchouli no. very strange because it's an oriental that is slightly citrusy so i never smell something like that it's got all the description of an oriental quite warm cocooning sexy but it's got that very citrus vibe at the beginning that is extremely sharp and that makes it very very unusual so it's really the definition of something bittersweet i would say and it's got also a little touch of an incense vibe but not too much so yeah number 14 is oud satin mood from mfk maison francis coeur Dijon. so i always love to talk about uh, these ones my favorite is grand soir but i saw i'm not gonna have grand soir again again and again because i'm talking about it all the time so um usually people are like oh what do you think of the the the, the, the oud my favorite is personally the oud satin uh better than the silk i feel it's a bit more oriental woody it's a bit more like sweeter wood this one is a bit more deep and smooth and it's very elegant because it's not that opulent but it does last a long time so that violet accord that gives slightly candid uh, accord that i really like in this one and there's also two type of rose bulgarian and turkish i think and the two mixed together give you like an explosion of rose but it's all calmed down with that wood so it's really nicely done actually and for me it always makes me think of a black satin dress of um 
a dangerous love affair because it feels quite mysterious as well even though the rose is really here it's very like a mesmerizing fragrance and number 15 is Oud for Grenes by Initio couldn't get a top without this one because for me it's the, one of the best fragrances I smelled last year and I feel the longevity and the, the, the sillage that you get when you wear that is absolutely stunning. I've done a lot of talk on my channel about this one, so you know, you find it in a few videos. But I just really love it. I think this is one of the best wood I've tried. It's really nice because it's got that herbaceous tone, like slightly medicinal tone. A bit sweet, but not too much. That. Um, herbaceous stone kills a bit the sweetness so it's really nicely balanced with that and I mean it's a straight to the point wood it's quite so soothing as well because there's a touch of lavender that's maybe why it's slightly medicinal and soothing but I oh, just love so much this fragrance like trust me if you want to try wood like just just try this one because it's really amazing number 16 is Kilian back to black so this is something that is quite uh, I think people are like or you hate it or you love it because it's a fragrance that is full of honey and that's why I think it stays and leaves a strong sillage because it's sticky as honey and there's also quite like tobacco mixed with it but it's really for me the honey that is the predominance of this scent it's quite like a resinous type of honey as well it's provocating provocating provoking it's really the image of Killian really like it's really the image of the brand that feels a bit like Tom Ford like slightly provocating scent like that won't let anyone not see you if you enter a room it's really actually addictive and this knob of tobacco makes me feel of you know it's the evening it's dark and um, you're having a nice cigar and you having like a very sweet cocktail like a bailey for example next to you and that combination of the two really makes me think of that and it makes me think like you've got those things and you're playing poker and it's very like a seductive scent very sensual and um, I mean I really enjoy it but you really need to love that honey feeling because trust me it's very sticky. 17 is Atelier Cologne and this is a uh, Oud Saphir and Oud Saphir is really a scent that smells if you like Tuscan leather you're probably gonna enjoy this but it's a bit sweeter than Tuscan leather and the, the I feel the, the leather is not not that dominant compared to it as well um it's a slightly like smoky sweet wood which i really enjoy because it smells quite pleasant it's bright it's velvety but i love wearing it because it's something that gives me a lot of comfort a lot of coziness especially in the mid-afternoon evening uh, but yeah you need to assume that kind of sweet sweetness but i mean for me it's one of my favorite of uh, atelier cologne and then number 18 is Chomalon Miren Tonkai. This is definitely uh, one of my favorite ever scents. Uh, this one's got a lot of lavender, a lot of myrrh, and obviously Tonka. Very obviously. Uh, but it doesn't remove all the sweetness. This is not a sweet fragrance. This is more a Tonka like. So it smells vanilla like, but it doesn't. It's not as sweet as it. It's more like a woody vanilla, so very discreet. And uh, then you've got that myrrh, very incensey that is here, without being churchy at all. It doesn't smell churchy, but it's very smoky, mysterious, and very simple scent. And this one, like you can wear it for me all day long, all night long. It's quite still like n not too intoxicating but the scent gives like trust me like when somebody enter a room and is wearing that I can tell it's this like straight away because it's such a distinctive scent so if you like something like incensey uh, with the that's waxy type of feeling you might enjoy this one a lot and then number 19 is YSL Opium. I had to go back to a classic for this scent. I think it's something timeless very ladylike uh, with a lot of spice and I can't do a top without this one because it's been the one that was used as a reference for very long lasting longe um, for very long lasting fragrance into designer since years and this fragrance for sure will give you a strong impression. There's no sugar in this fragrance at all. It's really like a basic 
spicy fragrance is a sophistication in a bottle it's really like if you want to have something nearly suffocating feels a bit baroque aphrodisiac as well so quite sexy but it's more like for me i see like a very busy uh, lady wearing this one or um you know like a working woman like give me this sensation of power really uh, with this fragrance and I really like that and it's also a bit exotic finally my next one is Kuros and Kuros is uh, a timeless classic but it's not gonna please any, uh, everyone because this is this is like a very old-fashioned I would say but I love it <laughs> I mean I love to be old-fashioned so I don't mind and um, it's quite like offensive with animalic notes but it's combed down with all the flowers that in inside especially the iris uh iris that give that powdery feeling so it's encapsulating the fragrance inside which is really nice it's very distinctive obviously it's not for everyone but if you want an attention grabbing and a strong scent this is really good i really see like a very charismatic uh, man wearing that quite mature because it's not like a very young young scent but uh I do love that vintage vibe and I think I don't want to forget that so I can see already 30 minutes in there so oh my god so I hope you enjoyed my list hey the video is stopping here so sorry about that um I've just seen during the edition that I didn't have that much space on uh, my camera so that's why it stopped like that and also there's like slightly time lapse between the voice and the image which i'm really sorry about uh but yeah if you like the video please subscribe to my channel uh, like it share it blah 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 and i will see you very soon uh, thank you for always being so kind bye bye so you